Welcome back to What Are Teen Noobs with General Disturbance. This is the 105 FH 18B2, the French Tier 5 Premium SPG that we know and love as Fifi La Piu Piu. You might know it as a Leffy, a Leaf Blower, or even a La Hepa. Uh, this one's located on the south spawn of El Halu, and it's under the command of Not Sober. Game on. Well, as we promised you, we've got another couple of games featuring Not Sober in what appears to be his favourite artist. As you can see, he's got some badges on there where he's actually managed to get five times, or is it three times? I think it's five actually there. Yes, it is five of the Reaper badges and three of the high calibers. So, and you have to, it's not just one high caliber, you have to get multiple ones to get it. So he really has excelled in this arty. Commander AF's colours, wish we could all get those. And usually comes with Commander AF's voiceover as well. Okay, he's set up, he's ready to go. He's actually gone down near the village, which is, or just south of the village actually, which puts him closer to the northwest corner, but it also gives him a good angle on the enemy tanks that might be trying to come across the, uh, the south end of the map especially being able to hit that little pass where the enemy tanks might try to go up the road that leads to our cap area. We do have a number of defenders there and they are spotting the enemy or would be spotting the enemy if there were any to see. The enemy arty in the meantime is actually trying to focus on our Panther and Challenger and we've entered into a tier seven game with tier five tanks. So we're bottom tier. And our first shot misses the VK3601H. But we're re reloaded, ready to go. Now, standard reload, 8.92 seconds. 7.22 for Not Sober, who, as he said, he freely admitted, he does play this game whilst he's had a few. Okay, he's trying to get the SMV CC656. No, well, it damaged the tracks but not, nothing else. Fired that one ahead. Oh, he lined that shot up perfectly, but it didn't cause any damage whatsoever, which is shocking because an artillery round, a 105 millimeter artillery round should do tremendous damage to the enemy. And that was a direct hit he got there. I can tell that because there was no explosion. He's now going for the VK. Yes, he's dialing in on that position and an M10's turned up and that's a very unwise decision by the M10 because that happens. Yes, he, he's probably just been penetrated by that shot and he's now regretting his life choices. Well, there he is and he obviously preferentially goes for the M10 because you can pen those things and they've got very thin armor and he's going to take advantage of this and finish off that guy and he does. Beautiful shot. 268. Suggests it might have been a penetrating shot, that last one. But he aims the next one for the VK. Now, the bad news is the SMB CC56 is coming on. But he does get some damage on the guy. Now, with premium rounds, this will be a really good opportunity to show that SMB CC56 exactly what a heat round will do to him when it's a 105mm. 350 Alpha is the normal Alpha for the heat rounds, but unfortunately, 410 for the HE, but he's not likely to get a pen on the SMB, but somebody else did. Oh, but he definitely tracked the KV-1SA, and he burned this repair kit to get moving again quickly, and he's been hit again. And this time around, he won't be going anywhere fast, because he's now tracked, and not sober, is going to take advantage of this, and pummel this guy. In fact, the kill shot goes to the M41 HMC on our team, who shoots him from all the way back in the cap area, or above the cap area. So that's a long range shot, and a nice shot for a tier five RT, which isn't that accurate at the best of times. Rounds out. Oh, oh, he penetrated the, uh, or rather he got a direct hit for 65. Probably wasn't a pen, but it certainly got a sizzle, so it went off against the side of the hull. Okay, we're now looking for targets, and the enemy has tried to come up the pass, 
but from this angle you can get direct hits on these enemy tanks. Okay, first shot is a bit of a snap one, but he does get a hit and tracks the poodle in its place. And that gives him the chance to go to town on this guy and he might get another kill if this works. Ah! Kill steal! The challenger got the kill steal um, and took away the chance. He fires snap at the Skoda and then turns around because now we've got a T29 in that corner. And so he's now going to have a go at this guy. Oh, cheeky one there. The RMG sent the shell to the right. Now, he, it appears he's got the big gun, the T29. He just fired his shell, so he's reloading. But we can really teach him a lesson about 105s with these shots. And the, it looks like the M41 is using the, the heat rounds because we just saw a heat round go flying through the air. And it was definitely the HMC. Okay, Skoda's had enough. In fact, it's a Skoda 24. Did you know that they actually designed the Skoda 24 and the Skoda 25 at the same time? But it was the uh, the Germans who actually selected the 25 over the 24. So it's not as if they were actually uh, designed... Uh, at different times and they went away and modified it they actually did design both at exactly the same time now the t29 is getting rather close and so he's actually decided to back up and go behind the bushes to give him a bit more uh, range and our teammates are coming up behind the enemy so hopefully if we can stop him and he gets a lovely hit there per 91 but he's starting to take fire from behind now if he stops the turn round they're not Sabre, it's really... Oh, he's been spotted! Ow! That hurt! He did take one round, he's about to take another, but the HMC comes to his rescue again. J-Hype Wizard just got a direct hit. And then... Oh! Both enemy artists are trying to nail him. That's funny. So he, he just lost a massive amount of his hit points. <laughs> he's... He's down to um, 81 hit points, which, according to this, says it's, that's not 13% of his health. No, it's low. <laughs> Ridiculously low. He's about, uh, it is about less than a third of his hit points. So one hit for 259. It's kind of dampened his game down. There's still five enemies out there. So it's still anyone's game. We've only got six. Both teams got two RT. We've got an extra tank destroyer and of course they've got a medium and we've got a heavy. The good news is that heavy is a T29 and hopefully if he's fully armed, the enemy's really going to suffer. Okay, there's the enemy Fifi. Long range shot, so it's not going to be accurate the first shot. Subsequent shots might be. Okay, he's turned to shoot, so he's going to be remain still whilst he's shooting. Oh, he suddenly got the warning that the shells are inbound. I think he's gone behind. Oh, no, he's going through the buildings because he knocked that building down. Okay, well, we lost our challenger, but we fired a nice shot at the Basotto just a little short. We're running short on ammo now. Now that Super Hellcat, he can work that one out with one shot. Fires it in snap. Got him! So that's his second kill of the game. And the enemy Fifi's come into sight, but he fired snap. And it's notoriously inaccurate if you fire snap. Um, one in ten shots normally around about hits the target. Now, let it dial in. He's not close enough to get a shot on the other Fifi. He's just too far back. Our T-29's moving in to try and spot the... There he is. Okay, fire again, snap. But this time round, it is accurate, and he gets 139. Can we get another shot on target? Nope, because that guy's gone. Now he's got three rounds left. He is short on ammo. He's been very busy, but the team score is now the same. But... Oh! 
That's a nice one because that gives him 20% of the enemy hit pool. Potential high caliber. Gets another hit. This is his last round. Oh, and the enemy goes down. The BK-3001H goes down, which means now there's only the Basotto and the uh, enemy Fifi. Or one of them. Now, I have the feeling that the Basotto is somewhere in the valley. And he's trying to get away from the T-29. I really do think he's somewhere, but he's also fully healthy. According to this, he's got all of his health. So not sober is taking a bit of a risk, but he's doing so to try and back up the T-29. He's being safe because he's going through the bush area where there's plenty of cover just in case the Vesotto spots him. There's the enemy Fifi. Now, let it dial in to get an accurate shot. He fires. Oh my god, he got him! Amazing! He is very good at leading shots, but that means he's got... Well, he managed to get one of the enemy RT. He's got three kills now. The enemy T20... Uh, no, the T29 on his own team's also got three kills, but he's in platoon with the Jagdpanther, and the Jagdpanther has died already, so he can't get a Brothers in Arms. And there's nobody else alive he could get a Brothers in Arms with, so, yeah... The M41's decided to cross the valley. We've got absolutely no ammunition left, as you can see. It says 0 0.00 and 0 HE. All we can do now is spot for the T29 if we find the Basotto. And then the T29 will turn him into a risotto. Oh, it's a bad joke, isn't it? Yeah, I'll, I'll get me a hat. Well, he's gone where the Basotto was last seen. Is he still in that vicinity? Oh, no, there he is. He's been spotted. The M41 spot him. He found him. Now, we need to get to the cap, and he's decided to continue. And he's going to go up the other chine because he's less likely to get spotted by the Basotto. And it, it looks to me like the enemy Basotto might be trying to get to our cap area he might be on the mission to try and kill both of our arty and he's already too late because both birds have flown the nest oh he found the m41 now is he likely to spot us he might we're at maximum range for him not been spotted so we're safe so T-29's capping the Basotto. Well, he could turn around and try and rush back, but I think he's going to find that when he does, both are going to be in the cap area and it'll be too late for him. Amazing that they've only made 16, or they only made 16 of these. I wonder what actually did happen to them in the end. Maybe the Germans buried them or dumped them in the sea. It could be if they did go out to the Channel Islands or they were on the coastline of France, then it's very possible that they just literally drove them into the sea and dumped them so they couldn't be captured by the um, Allies. Well, we're going to get into the cap, but it's not going to last very long. And this one is a definite victory. Oh, my gun! He took a round from the Basotto, but it was too late because they'd already won! My god! Well, that was a bit of a shock because he'd only just got into the cap and they completed the cap of the, um, of the base. But then the enemy round from the Basotto bounced off the barrel of the 105mm light field howitzer. And he was saved by his own gun. <laughs> Would you believe it? That was an ace tanker game for not sober in the 105 left H 18B2. He managed to get a bruise medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got 20. He got a gauze medal for doing more damage, exceeding eight times the hit points of his own vehicle. He got a Starks medal. Yes, that second shot, because it was blocked, it still counts. 
towards the Starks Medal, you've got to receive at least two enemy tank, uh, two shells, rather. Um, you've got to lose two thirds of your hit points, which he'd already done. And he's got to survive the battle. And of course, he did that. So he got one of the most difficult medals to actually get, other than, of course, the Racini Heroes medals, which is virtually impossibly difficult to get. Um, a Confederate medal for doing more damage, uh, hitting more of the enemy than anyone else on his team. And on top of that, he got the high caliber for dealing the most damage in that game overall. Let's have a look at the team score and see where he was. Well, the highest damage was 3,132 hit points to not sober. Second highest damage was the Sermavente, the one who actually survived the Basotto at the end of the game. 2,257 hit points went to him. I think he was desperate to get a Pascucci's medal, which is probably why he aimed directly at... Uh, uh, at um, Not Sober, rather than the T29, who's actually been capping all that time. He was the one with the cap points, but the, they actually had capped out by that point anyway. And we can see that the third highest damage in the game went to the T29, and he picked up 1,992. When it came to kills, we can see that it was actually shared between the T29, Not Sober, and the Semvente. All had three kills each. And when it came to base XP, we can see that Not Sober got the highest with 1,376 base experience points. 1,303 went to the T29. The next highest was the Challenger, who got 798. He fired 50 rounds, all of his ammunition gone, but he did get a very nice hit towards the end to actually help um, uh, with the um, uh, shot on the Fifi. Uh, 30 direct hits, 4 penetrations, 27 splash. Damage of 3,132, of which 2,913 were at more than 300 meters. So I think there was a close range shot. And I think it might be on the T29, the one that he actually um, uh, fired that was relatively close. He received two hits. One was penetration, one non-penetration. And, of course, he received one of those hits from the enemy T-29, the other one from the Basotto. Eleven enemy vehicles were damaged. So, yes, he was on course for a pools medal. But, he, yes, a lot of players kept getting kill steals, specifically the M41 HMC, who was getting incredibly accurate shots, considering that 155mm howitzer is, is not that accurate. It's very inaccurate, unless you're a good player. 330 hit points of damage assistance, and he got six capture points in the cap. On a premium count, he actually earned 123,018 credits from that battle, and he also took away 11,146 XP as well. And of course, that battle took place on New Year's Eve. Yes, 31st of December. Uh, so it was actually played yesterday, as far as I'm concerned, uh, in the morning in yesterday. So early morning. In, uh, in fact, I think as far as not sober is con concerned, because he's in America and it might have been picking up the server um, time, then it might have been on the 30th of December. I, I'm not absolutely 100 percent sure, because normally the replays actually have the time at which they've been played on the server that they've been played on. But in this case, uh, it's it's actually coming in at 445 in the morning on the 31st of December. And that might be um, that it's actually taking place on the 30th, but late in the evening um, with the time difference. We'll have to find out about that because that's something I've always wondered about the timing of the battles. Do they take the client server, the client's time or the server's time, or is it the record site's time uh, wherever the record site is located? Because this one, is in the EU. This is uh, what replays.eu, and of course that's in Europe. So of course it should pick up Europe time if that's the case. But we'll have to find out. Anyway, that's the first battle, and it's an ace tanker. We've got a second replay. Yep, he's been busy, and the second replay actually has today's date, um, and it's the first of January. So I'm wondering about this. That's why I'm asking about the uh, the timing. You see because he's already sending in a replay and it's just coming up to seven in the morning. So he must have been playing overnight on New Year's Day. So let's see what he does in this one. 
The second replay is on the southern spawn of Glacier. Okay, he's backing up into the woods. You don't have to go all the way into the woods, actually. In fact, um, um, a lot of Arty players will stay exactly in the same place as they uh, actually um, spawned on and then get their first shot in, then move to a hiding position. Not everyone has to move the moment you are the game starts. Although a lot of, pe a lot of people do like to do that. They like to get into cover, get settled. But, okay, first enemy we spot is a leopard who doesn't appear to be moving very correctly because that he's going in reverse. And, oh, that was very close to his original position. But I think... No, whoever's driving that one is not clued up. Maybe it's late at night and he's also had a few. Okay, so yes, Not Sober's decided to move now after uh, getting his first shot in. Didn't get an accurate hit. Oh, now there's some bad news there. One of the enemy team is one of those Panzer Pumpfiers, I think. Yes, it is. Now, the Pumpfier is basically a Panther hull with a Panzer IV turret. And what makes it deadly is the massive fire rate. It's got a similar fire rate to this thing, I'm afraid. Um, much more uh, accurate and deadly than the standard Panzer Fear or the Panther. It's got the mobility of the Panther, but yes, I was just checking to see if there's anybody there because the Jackson was seen in that spot. Now you can see the trajectory of the 105mm shells. It's actually quite good because he's able to loop the shell over the carrier. Oh! Well, he got a critical hit, but he didn't do any damage. Now he's going for the engine deck. He loves to do that sort of thing. And he actually got a direct hit there. And he's lost a few hit points, that T1. I can't see the mark where the shell landed. He might have actually got an engine deck with that one. Now, going for the Churchill, who's overextended. And he also takes an engine deck. And that's a penetration shot. So that's 392. It's 410 Alpha. So to get 392, you have to get a pen. A T1 Heavy is overextended. Oh, just snapped that one a little too late. But he can put the shell directly down on top of the KV-2's turret if he can let it dial in. He has to let it dial in to get the shot that accurate. KV-2 knows he's being focused on. So he's actually hiding right next door to the ship. Oh, he's gone down to the corner. Look in your corner. He can't see it, but it's there. There's the Churchill. Rounds out. Oh, yes, his first kill. I think that might be a penetrating shot too. Yeah, KV-2 driver knows what he's doing. Keeping close to the cover of that uh, defilade. Okay, there's the front fear. Now, if he could get this thing, this would be great. That would really help. He's most of them. They're premium tanks, so you can, we can, uh, everyone can buy one if it's available. They don't often make them available though, because they are so OP. They're very rarely on sale. Okay. Oh, Wolverine. Now, that one he can take out. Let it settle. I hit one of these the other day myself, and the shell landed directly in the cockpit and blew to pieces. Oh, he's done it again. He's got it into the cockpit. Oh, my God. Just as I say it, he does it. And he's got the kill. Two perfect shots. Well, it would have been even more perfect if he killed the uh, Wolverine with his first round. But, oh my god, yeah. <laughs> oh, he got dirt by a box tank. So, yes, very satisfying that, that he actually gets the kill on that Wolverine, who makes a big mistake coming up. 
He needs to let that one settle in, but there's two enemy tank destroyers. He's seen them. A Honey 3 and a Basotto, and they're trying to make their way over. Now, I think they may have cooked it by doing this because now he can let it dial in. He's reloading. If he can get an accurate shot on this, guys, he could actually get another couple of kills. The Honey is down in the gap between the, the ship and... The oh, it's another pen! Another definite pen! 404! Now, a little closer is a T-3485M, but he's in the gorge, which makes him really difficult to hit. Lost sight of those guys, so we're switching back. The only problem now is that both those KB-2s are unspotted. So he's actually aiming for the pass where they're most likely to be spotted the first time by our guys. We've got a Porlack and a Cromwell. They'll be looking for him as uh, they come around that corner. Of course, two KV-2s more than likely do have the derp gun. We are seeing a few KV-2s appearing now where people are using the 107mm main gun instead. I know it's a bit of a heresy to do that, but the fact is that it's a very, very accurate gun. It does a reasonable amount of damage, and it's got a much faster reload than the derp gun. So it actually makes a better gun to use. Oh, they sneaked around. They tried to outflank. One of them went this way. And, oh, that one went past him. You can do it. That's it. Goes the other side. But this time, it still damages the tracks. 1.98 meters. If you can get it that close, you will splash him. You know, we can't get a shot at the T-34-85M, and he's actually proximity spotting the box tank, which is why the box tank has pulled back. Very sneaky of those KV-2s to come all the way round. They decided they didn't want to go underneath the carrier, and they wanted to go around the other side. No sign of the Basotto or the Jackson. And now our box tank is starting to receive fire. There must be an enemy tank over in the... Uh... Oh, well, the M10 on our team just got the KV-2 or one of them. But there might be an RT over in the northwest corner of the map. Okay, but, uh, SU-100. Yes, good hit. Solid hit. Remember, that's uh, T-3485 hull with a big gun on it. Pistat Simu is the name. The end of that <laughs> effing anything. I was about to say the, the rude word, but I stopped myself in time. Okay, KV2's decided to go through the gap. That's not good for him, because now not sober can go to work on him, because he hasn't got any cover in there. Ah, he's got a kill. That's three. Um, unfortunate thing is we're down to just four tanks on either team. The Cromwells decided to go around the corner. Now, the enemy RT is a bishop. Not so, but he's decided to change position because he's a bit vulnerable in the current one. But for the enemy RT to get a shot on him, he'd have to be really close. Of course, as you all know, the bishop, short range RT. Very powerful 4.5 inch howitzer, but it has to be really close to the target in order to get shots on them. It's got a limited range. The range on this RT is 10,675 meters. That's the actual range for the 105 millimeter. Okay, well, the T-3485M has been spotted, and he is fairly close. And he's not alone. He's got a Jackson up there. The SU-100's gone up, and uh, now, if he aims pre-aims on this corner, yeah, because the SU-100's just got wiped out, and the Bishop just fired around at him. Nope. 
tried to get around over. 17 rounds of ammo left. I just saw the T-34 dis disappearing. I think he's headed back to his own cap. Nope. Jackson. Lovely. Good hit on the engine deck. Takes another hit afterwards. We've got the damage assist. And he goes down. So it's three left on either team. So it's the M10 who's actually spotting for us at the moment. And there's the Basotto. Been spotted. He's near the, where the, um, uh, the Jackson was. And he goes down to the M10. So that leaves the enemy team with a T-3485 M and the Bishop. And the T-34 is only a short distance away from us. We've been spotted. Oh, good shot. That was fired snap, but because he was close, he is very close. And he is a one shot, the T-34. We can get a hit. But the Bishop, yes. And we see where he is. The Bishop is on the ice. He's on the ice. He just damaged our tracks. Now, we're not close enough for a proximity spot at the moment. We can see where the bishop is. There's the bishop. Okay, let it settle. Let it settle. Let it dial in. Tracked him. Now, finish him off with this round. Oh, and he gets hit by the... Oh, he killed him! He killed the bishop. He took a round from the T-3485 M, but it didn't wipe him out. It was only an 85 millimeter round, only 160 or, well, in fact, actually it's, oh, he hangs on and he gets it. Beautiful. He wins the game. Well, despite breaking the cardinal rule of firing at a target and then looking away immediately at something else, he had to because he'd already just been hit by the enemy T-3485M and he saw the readout showing that that shot that he fired, that shot as a blind target because he couldn't see him anymore, uh, was absolutely accurate, did wipe out the bishop. And then he used his auto-aim as he'd done before to take out the T-3485M with his uh, four degrees of gun depression, because that's all this thing has, four degrees of gun depression. Mind you, the thing is fairly high on the on the, uh, the hull, therefore that four degrees really does count. And he managed to shoot an accurate shot right into the T-34 and finished off the game with five kills. That was an ace tanker game for Not Sober in the 105 Left H18B2. He managed to get a gauze medal for taking at least um, uh, two shots from the enemy, losing two thirds of his hit points and surviving the game to uh, be alive at the end. He also got a bruise medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got 14. He got a duelist for taking down two tanks who damaged him. And he got a fighter badge as well for getting at least four kills. He ended up with five, which is one third of the enemy team. Just one tank short of a top gun. Uh, so he missed out on that, but it was an ace tanker game. And it was played this morning, 1st of January, 2024, at four, four, uh, 48 minutes past midnight. So, yeah, I can imagine he was probably playing all night. Uh, and, and he sent this one in and I, I couldn't not put it into the, the list and uh, do it straight away. So all those people who are still waiting for your replays, I, I've had thousands of replays over, uh, well, not thousands over Christmas, but I've had a lot and I've been trying to get them done as quickly as I can. But as, as I do them, I get more added. <laughs> it just, it's never ending. It's like uh, trying to uh, paint the fourth row bridge. And if you're a British people, you, if you're British, you'll know what that means. It's a never ending job because as soon as you finish painting one end of the bridge, you've got to then um, go back and start again on the other end. So it, it really is a never ending job, but wow, what a game that was. And to get a, a, a Starks medal out of it as well. Very well done indeed. You can see straight off that he actually did pen the bishop to get that kill. He also got a, a, a pen shot on the Honey 3 and on two pen shots on the same Churchill, who was probably cursing him by then, and two pen shots on the M10 Wolverine as well. 
So again, another player who was probably thinking, oh my gum, that was the guy I think who popped his head up. You got the pen shot. He pulled back and the second shot that went in penned him as well. So yeah, he was completely wiped out. Let's have a look at team score and see how this went. Well, he didn't get the highest damage in the game. The KV2 on the enemy team got 2,818 hit points. He got the high caliber out of that one. So he was very close to getting it, but not quite. He got 2,756 hit points in second place, not sober. And in third place, we've got the T3485M, the last tank that got killed on the enemy team. 1,406 hit points of damage to him. When it came to kills, Not Sober got that one with five kills. Three kills went to the M10 RBFM on his team, who was still alive at the end. So was the Cromwell. And three kills also went to the KV2 on the enemy team. And then we've got two kills to the SU100 on our team and to the SU100 on the enemy team and their bishop. When it came to base XP, it's Not Sober again. He's got, uh, well, he's got two out of three. I suppose that's not bad. 1,176, which means he's the only player to get over 1,000 in this game, with the Cromwell B getting 801 and the M10 RBFM getting 745. So a very good game there for Not Sober. Let's have a look at detail. He had 11 rounds left at the end of the game, 39 rounds fired, 12 direct hits and six penetrating shots. As we saw, two of them actually hit, the, he hit two enemy tanks with two penetrating rounds. They must have been really furious about that. 12 splash as well, 2,756, of which 2,629 were at more than 300 meters. Those are the shots on the uh, T3485M, uh, I believe, because he was very close at the time. He did receive one hit. It was a penetrating shot and one hit by way of splash. That was the shot from the bishop, which got close, but didn't actually uh, uh, damage him. So, of course... Um, he actually suffered two pen uh, two shots, lost two thirds, uh, but still survived. Ten enemy vehicles damaged. So uh, yes, he was on the way to getting a pool's butt again. He came up against teammates who were very good and managed to kill steal some of the <laughs> targets that he was after. Five kills, one hundred eight hit points of damage assistance. Now, on a premium count, he actually earned 108,045 credits from that game. So another big bumper score helps by the fact that he had um, the personal reserve bonus and the holiday op score as well. And 2,470 experience points as well. So an, a really good game here. Um, almost, you could say, together with that very unusual game. Um, actually, he didn't get a Starks medal. This is a Gores medal. Yes, I've got it wrong here. So he didn't qualify for the Starks, probably because the second shot didn't actually, um, he didn't lose enough hit points. He definitely got hit twice, though. So uh, maybe it was just splash from the bishop. So I got that wrong. So it's not a Starks, it's a Gores. So he did uh, enough damage to do, um, for eight times the hit points of his own vehicle. So yes, two really good games. I was just correcting myself there. Uh, where he gets a uh, ace, scores, a Starks, a Confederate, and a high caliber. And then the very, uh, not the very next one, but in the next game he sent off another ace, another Gauze, um, and misses out on a couple of medals. But there you go. So I hope you enjoyed both of those replays. I think Not Sober has been not sober over Christmas, definitely. Um, and why not? Because after all, it is a holiday and you should be enjoying yourself. And I'm sure he has sent in these replays, hoping they'll get, get done fairly quickly. In fact, they, the second batch uh, of two has been done incredibly quickly, but that's only because they came in and he was the next in the list for the first two, and he sent those in earlier in the month. And so uh, when I saw them all and they were all together, I, I managed to fit the other two in directly behind the first two. So if you enjoyed that replay, please give this video a like, do subscribe to our channel, leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.